All right, so now what we're gonna do is build a basic HTML form to send data to a view. And so what we wanna do for this is to first off, start off with the form itself. So inside of templates, inside of articles, we're gonna make a new file and we're gonna call this create.html. And yes, of course, this means that I'm actually gonna be creating the article in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the detail one just for some of the, the outline of it, you know, the extends and the block. And so in here, we're gonna go ahead and create a basic HTML form with a post method. So let's go ahead and do form and we wanna pass in method is post. Now, if you think about our form for an article, at this point, we only have two fields, right? So we have title and content. So the title field is input type being just text, and we'll give it a name of title. Not really groundbreaking here. Next, what we're gonna do is a text area field, and this will be a name of content. Now, text area works a little bit differently than an input, as in it opens and closes like that, and that's really it. So I'm also gonna go ahead and put a placeholder here and say your title or article title, or just simply title, and then let's go ahead and do the same thing in our text area. So we'll say placeholder equals to content. Okay, and then finally, we're gonna go ahead and do input type being submit and the value equals to create article. Okay, so the value is just gonna be the label of the button. So you can also do a button type of submit and do it like this as well. So you can use it where the button's in the middle then, and now you can actually add additional features to a submit button of some kind. Okay, great. So now of course we need to render this and have a proper URL for it. So let's go into our views and I'm gonna copy the article detail view just for some of the outline of it. And we'll call this article create view, change the template to create the context to just an empty dictionary. And then everything else is gonna be gone. And so now that we have this article create view, let's go ahead and update our URLs. I'm gonna copy the search view, add create to it, and then article create view. Okay, so like I mentioned before, the order matters. If you were to put the items like that, then create wouldn't necessarily be hit. Now in this case it will because it's integers, and if you type out create, it will work. Uh, but if you used a string, then it wouldn't work. So the order, the order of operations here is still important. And I typically like doing it this way, even if I'm using integers. Okay, so now that we've got that path, we've got the view, we've got create, and all of them are saved. Let's go ahead and try this out. So going into articles and create. Now I've got this content here. Now, of course, I have the form up here. So the actual submit form is above this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do div and we'll just add a style of margin dash top of 30 pixels. Okay. So we will actually be adding a front end framework for styling later. Uh, but for now, this is just a really quick and easy way to just move the content apart. That's it. That was kind of the point there. And then even with the inputs themselves, we can add a break tag or put each input into a div itself to help separate things just a little bit more. So even just putting one of them in actually makes a difference as we see, there we go. And then we could also have that same margin top on this div. Now, those of you who know HTML CSS re really well, you're like, well, what are you doing with the inline CSS? Uh, don't worry, we'll change that later. Uh, but for now, there we go. Actually, let's change the margin top on this one to just maybe 10 pixels, so it's a little closer. And you know what? Let's do it on the button as well. So it's nice and somewhat evenly spaced out. Okay, so now I actually wanna submit this data to my backend, which is why I use the method of post. I want this to go to a specific URL. So again, we want that action and it's gonna be articles and create. Now I could totally have that action of articles create, but this is the only view that this is gonna work in. So I can just leave it as a period. As in, I don't have it across all views like I do with the search form, 
I just have it on this one single view. So just the action of period works just fine. So let's actually try this out. So back into create, I'm going to go ahead and say my title in another content piece. Hit create article. And now I get this forbidden call CSRF verification failed. So CFRF is for security. It's a security measure to ensure that nobody's just sending data to you, right? So if, if you wanted to uh, receive data from other sources, there is a secure way to do that. But in this case, we're on our webpage. We should actually be able to handle this. And of course, this actually gives you a bunch of options in here. And so one of them is this CSRF token right here. We don't actually have that yet. And then we also have this middleware and all this stuff. So um, the main thing here is this actual CSR token template tag inside each post form that targets an internal URL. That is exactly the answer. That is exactly the solution to this. Now, before we even do that, I will say there is a decorator called CSRF, CSRF exempt, which allows you to circumvent that. We don't want to circumvent that. That is a security risk, but I just wanted to mention it because some of you would be interested in circumventing that, especially if you're building some sort of REST API. So now let's go ahead and actually solve this first problem of having CSRF token. What we need to do is inside of this form here, we need to pass in a token CSRF token, just like that. So curly brackets percent CSRF token, curly brackets percent. And of course it was on that error. So you could always copy and paste from that error. And so now that we've got this create, I can go ahead and say my title and new title or whatever. I hit enter, no error anymore, but nothing really happened with the data or at least so I could see. Now let's remember we use the post method here. And so I want to be able to handle that post method. So just like what we did with our search view, we printed out the get method data. I'm going to go ahead and print out the post method data. So we save that and let's go ahead and hit enter again. And right now I just did a get call to that URL. I refresh that page. And so if I look at that page, Notice that it says a query dictionary again. So if I refresh over and over, it still says that query dictionary. If I put a question mark Q equals to ABC up here, the get query param, then we've got still an empty query dictionary. But of course, if I actually did request.get, what do you know? It will actually give me that query dictionary. Because when you actually go to a page, when you get the page, it's different than when you post to the page or when you send to the page. So now we have it posted. We have it ready for post data. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And I'll say my title and new title. Hit create article. And what do you know? It's now in here along with the CSRF middleware token. So again, this is a security measure to ensure that the session you're on or the user is on matches with the one that Django expects. And so that is definitely a nice security feature right in there built in, which is really cool. So it doesn't, pre it prevents us from getting just bad data and bad content that might actually be malicious to everything going on on our system. But anyway, so now we see that we can grab this data. And just like we did with the query parameters, we can get that data in there. And so there's a couple of different methods that you will see how this is done. First off, we can go ahead and just say what the data is. So title equals to request.post and title. Okay, so I can totally do it that way. But the problem with that is when I hit enter here, when I do a get request, it's saying it doesn't know this value. It's missing, right? And that's of course because this right here is actually an empty dictionary. So if we scroll up a bit, we see that it's printed out and there's an empty dictionary. And this command right here assumes that title is a key in that dictionary, but of course it's not. So if we do dot get of title, then we can actually have a get request and it will actually render the form correctly. And so now that we grab this and we grab the content, just like that, 
we now have a way to grab both of those things. And of course we can print them out now. So title and content, I'll comment out the other print statements, actually even the get one up here. And we will now just see title and content. So we come in here and I'll go ahead and say my title and new content and hit create article. And if we scroll down enough, we will see that it says none, none to start. Of course, none, none is because of the get request right here. And then it shows me these two titles, the actual title and content. And of course, this is because of the post request. Notice that it even shows the method used from the form or the actual request itself. This is great. So this actually means that it's really simple to add new content in here. And so I can actually just come in with the article and do article.objects.create, title being title and content being content. And of course I can do it this way, but as we've seen, if I allow it to happen on the get request, which is what's happening right now, it's gonna create content uh, with none in it, right? So none would be the title and none would be the content itself. So what we can do is we can wrap all of this in as if request.method equals to post, then we can handle all of this data, right? So this is really just a simple condition to say, hey, if this is a post method that's doing this request, then handle things this way, which I think is makes it a little bit cleaner. So now we save that and let's go ahead and create something. This is pretty new and another sweet way to create stuff. We hit create article. Doesn't seem like anything happened because the form was cleared out. I'll explain why in a moment. Uh, but now if we go into the admin, assuming you're still logged in, if you're not, just go ahead and log in. You can go into articles and now we see that a brand new article was created with this is pretty new, another sweet way to create stuff. Okay, cool, so that's really nice. Now, the question you're probably wondering now, of course, is why did it just empty out the form? Like, why isn't the data in there anymore? Well, so what happens is when you run any request, it's going to go through this whole setup, this whole process. So when you do a get request, it's going to trigger this view. When you do a post request, it's going to trigger this view. And so the content gets cleared out because, well, we're not passing it back to the request itself. So the way we could pass it back is just like this. So first off content, context of title is equal to that title and context of content is equal to that content. Okay, so now I'm actually passing that data back because it's gonna be re-rendered in this form right here. So I'm really just adding that context right back in after it was already created. And I can of course add other context such as context and saying like created and being equal to true, right? So this is actually probably a wise thing to do so we can have a condition in our template. So back into our template, we'll go ahead and say, let's do a condition of if not created, so that Boolean value, the true false value, which is right here. So if not would mean that if it's empty, if it's not even in there, it's gonna show this. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and say that it was created. And so with this, I would do something more like a list view. Uh, so something that we've seen before where we actually listed through everything, this right here. So it would almost be like this, but really just this article right here. So I'm just really wanting a link itself uh, to the article and say, instead of x.id, well, we might actually need the object itself. So Let's go ahead and pass that as context instead of the other variables. So we'll have to come back to that one. And we'll say that P, your article was created. Okay, so let's go ahead and update our view. So it's not just the content itself, but the actual uh, object. So we can go ahead and say object equals to, or rather article object is equal to that. And so the context now will just be object and that article object. Okay, so hopefully none of this is like groundbreaking to you in terms of Python and what I did. Perhaps you didn't know that this actually creates an object and we'll be able to set it to a variable, um, but that's okay. We totally can, and that's exactly 
like what we did with the detail view right here, except it's not getting it, it's not retrieving it, it's just being set to it after it's created. So we save that, go back into create, and let's go ahead and try this again, and say yet another one, and we'll go ahead and say new content, hit create article, and now it goes, your article was created, and now we can go there. And there we go. Cool, so yet another fundamental aspect to using basic HTML forms. Now, there's a huge, huge downside to using HTML forms in this manner, and that is we did a lot of duplicating how our content actually works. In other words, the inputs right here and here can already be inferred based off of the model we're trying to create for. And the other challenge of this HTML form at it, as it currently stands is the fact that anybody can do this. Perhaps we only want super users or admin users to be able to use this particular form, or we want a specific user name to use this form. Those things we still need to handle, but before we can do any of that, we actually need a better login flow or a better login logout than just going directly to the admin. So let's go ahead and create the login stuff first with a lot of the built-in things, and then we'll come back to this form and just make it a little bit better uh, in terms of creating content.